Elmer Allen was designated experimental test subject Cal-13 on July 18, 1947 in a San Francisco hospital. He was injected with plutonium in the left leg. Three days later, the leg was amputated at mid-thigh. Elmer was a porter for the Pullman Company who injured his leg while stepping off a train. He was diagnosed with a fracture that developed into a cyst. The first test for cancer was negative. The second test indicated cancer. Unable to work, he was forced to return to Italy, Texas with his wife and three children after the operation. His wife recalled that he began having epileptic seizures. He would chew through the spoon, his tongue too. Elmer began drinking heavily and told his best friend that he had been used as a guinea pig, but no one, not even his family doctor, believed him. The doctor leg later diagnosed him as a paranoid schizophrenic. During an effort to collect the bodies of the people injected with plutonium, it was discovered to their amazement that four of these people were still alive. In 1943, Austin Buse from the Center for Human Radiobiology wrote to Elmer and asked him to be in a metabolism study. He and his wife were brought to Chicago and Elmer's urine and feces were collected for two weeks as he stayed in the hospital. The trip was paid for and Elmer received $140 plus $13 a day expenses. X-rays revealed bone damage consistent with radiation. He died in 1991. His headstone reads Elmer Allen, 1911-1947. Cal 13, 1947-1991, one of America's nuclear guinea pigs. While these secret experiments on thousands of Americans were going on in hospitals, the very public testing of nuclear weapons lasted from 1945 until the Test Ban Treaty in 1963. Approximately 253 above-ground tests were conducted in the Pacific and the U.S., in which nearly 400,000 military personnel took part. The external dose of beta radiation was measured by badges, but these were not s distributed in significant numbers. The badge did not measure the dose from other external particles such as alpha, gamma, or X-ray radiation, nor did it measure the ingestion of small particles that lodge in tissues and do continuous damage. Some of the troops felt immediate effects of radiation poisoning and developed lifelong complications, while others became sick many years later. Bill Scott of Camarillo, California was a former Air Force photographer and filmed some of the nuclear tests. According to Helena, his widow, starting in 1955, Bob had nosebleeds, backaches, and coughing attacks followed by vomiting, nausea, and upset stomach. His nosebleeds would last for days at a time. His teeth rapidly decayed and his feet became dry and scaly. In 1971, he was hospitalized for tests that found bone cancer that spread rapidly, and six months later, he was gone. The Atomic Veterans Newsletter published the following statement. We are the victims of radiation experiments, too. They exposed over 200,000 of us in over 200 atmospheric atomic and hydrogen bomb tests between 1945 and 1962. They deliberately bombed us with nuclear weapons and exposed us to deadly radioactivity to see how it would affect us and our equipment in nuclear warfare on land, sea, and air. They didn't need our informed consent because we were under military discipline. They devalued our lives, too. They made us sterile. They crippled and killed our children. They made widows of our wives, then denied repeatedly and publicly that there was ever any danger. Say the lie often enough, and people will believe it. The third group of experimental human subjects are the downwinders. This term refers to all the people exposed to radiation as a result of atmospheric testing. This group, in essence, comprises the entire U.S. and, in fact, the entire world. Fallout from all 2,000 nuclear tests has deposited plutonium and other radioactive substances in the bodies of every human being on Earth. At what point this experiment would prove fatal for all human life is an unknown. But it is known that the human embryo is very vulnerable and that one to two rads is sufficient to cause deformity or death. Radiation fallout maps indicate that this much radiation and more has been deposited across the continental United States. 
Brenda Weaver lived most of her life seven miles from Hanford in an area known as Death Mile. Her family always seemed sick and she developed thyroid disease at 12 and had an ovary removed at 14. In the early 60s, the sheep on her farm were born missing legs, body parts, missing eyes. Her daughter, Jamie, was born in 1965 without eyes. Says Weaver, she has eyelashes and eyelids and tear ducts, but no eyes. It makes life difficult. It's hard to be blind. One study documents an unexplained increase in child mortality in the U.S. that began shortly after testing began and decreased when atmospheric testing ended. It was acknowledged that a full-scale nuclear exchange could have ended the human race, but it is also possible that continued testing could eventually accomplish the same result. It should be noted that underground tests vent radiation, and these tests are ongoing. The government held hearings in the 1990s and gave monetary compensation to several individuals injected with plutonium, but not the hundreds of thousands of others injured in secret testing. The government re report is largely a whitewash. Few victims were compensated and no scientist or government employee was ever punished. The institutions claimed ignorance or that patients were fully informed when this was patently false in all cases. They have largely dodged the responsibility for participating in these acts. After the advisory committee's final report, the children of the deceased plutonium victims had the following statements. I guess the government really won. All the culprits that planned and executed this thing got away with it. For them to say that a little apology is enough is just beyond belief. I do feel betrayed and I feel abused by this committee's report. Nuclear explosions produce plutonium oxide which is deposited in the lungs and lymph nodes and cannot be detected in the urine. The human experimental subjects were injected with plutonium citrate or plutonium nitrate which does show up in the urine. Thirty years of testing urine from those exposed in above ground tests has led to thousands of useless tests that show a false negative and false evidence that could be used to claim that these human exposures were low or non-existent. The search for the biological dosimeter lasted 30 years at dozens of labs, costing millions of dollars, and produced no answer. Just how much radiation is a safe dose in the human body, and how to measure the amount the body has received is still unknown. The current answer in science is that there is no such thing as a safe dose of radiation. Mary Jean Connell, the only living victim of the plutonium experiments, when asked how she felt after receiving $100,000, merely replied, I'm afraid it's going to happen again, you know.